Hi, and welcome to Roswell United Methodist Church. My name is Michael Cromwell, and I have the joy of serving as one of the associate pastors here at RUMC. Thanks for joining us for our on-demand version of the sermon, which will be delivered later today. If you'd like to watch our services live, you can do so via our live stream at 9 o'clock and 11.15. Notice our different worship times and our different hours that we have now. You'll also be able to see the entire worship service on demand later this afternoon at rumc.com slash sermons. We are so glad that you are with us today. We're thankful for your presence and we're thankful for your generosity and the different ways that you are helping to make RUMC a place of community and faith. Let's have a word of prayer before we hear our sermon. Gracious and loving God, we love you so much and we are grateful for this day and this day that we have to worship you. May the words that we are to hear, may they not only pierce our ears, but pierce our hearts as well, that we might be changed in different people because of what you have to say to us today. We thank you and we love you all in Christ's name we pray, amen. Now let's hear our sermon from today. This morning I'll be reading from 1 Corinthians chapter 11 and I'll be reading verses 23 through 26. And this is what it says. For I received from the Lord that which I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus on the night when he was betrayed took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, this is my body which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he also took the cup after supper saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Pray with me. Jesus, this day it's yours. May we never take it for granted and know that it's, it's, it's your spirit that meets us here. It's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. What helps you remember? Is it words? Are you a list maker? Do you write down words? I'm a list maker. I, I, I leave lists everywhere I go. To-do lists. And there's something about going from my mind to my pen and onto paper. There's something about writing it down that helps me remember. I, is it words? Do, do words help you remember? I remember when my son was in third grade. He said, Dad, can I have a dirt bike? And I said, well, what in the world made you think about a dirt bike? He said, oh, I have a friend at school and he has a dirt bike and it sounds like a lot of fun. Well, I had a dirt bike when I was a kid. I was seventh grade and I had to buy my own and wow, was it fun. I was bitten by the bug and I could, I could see why he'd want a dirt bike. And I said, well, remind me when you're in sixth grade. We can talk about it then. Well, the boy has a memory like an elephant. And <laughs> the, the summer before his sixth grade year, he said, Dad, you said when I got to be sixth grade, we could talk about a dirt bike. Can I have a dirt bike? Well, we had to talk about it a good bit. I, it wasn't like I could just buy him a dirt bike and say, well, head out into the woods and whenever you get ready to come home, come on home or jump on the dirt bike. I, I had to get one too. And so the two of us, for over 10 years, every time we had an opportunity, we'd be on the motocross track, we'd be out into the woods, and together, we spent hours and hours and hours. Well, I didn't want to let those hours get by without a way to remember them. So starting, well, it says right here, November 16th, 2003, wrote down the just a few words to remember every single one of those, those rides. And I could spend hours looking through over 10 years worth of notes of rides that we had together. Just a, just a few words. What helps you remember? Is it the words? Words are important. Words are important to help us remember things that we want to remember. But Maybe it's not just words. Maybe it's symbols. We live in a, a, a world of symbols maybe more than we have for centuries. I mean, you, you look at your, your, 
your phone. And the app doesn't say this app is for text messages. No, there's a, 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 a conversation bubble on there. It's a picture. It's a symbol. And it reminds you of, of more than just words. It reminds you of, of, of what you do with that app. The, uh, your emails. It doesn't say this app is for emails. No, there's a, a picture of an email there. And, and it's the symbol. Symbols are are huge to help us remember. Symbols carry a lot more in just a, a picture or a symbol than can be said in words. I remember years ago, I was in my first church and we had 26 people on every Sunday morning. And if there were 25, we knew who was missing. And we'd give them a call. We'd go see how they were doing. And every Sunday night, about 10 or 12 of those people would come back for worship. And I had two, two sermons every Sunday, one in the morning and one at night. One of those people that came every morning and every night was Fannie Mae Vollenweider. Now, with a name like Fannie Mae Vollenweider, you just don't forget that name. That name belongs in a book. And she was one of those people that belonged in a book. She was a gracious, wonderful, wonderful woman. And she had grand, great-grandchildren that were older than I was. And she would invite me to dinner often, to be a part of her family. And the more you got to know Ms. Vollenweider, the more you realized she was more than just a gracious, sweet, older woman. She had a sly sense of humor. One day, at the beginning of church, she said, hey, preacher, I made something for you. And, she gave, and this is what she gave me. She said, it reminded me of you. And then she had her little sly smile on her. Well, a lesser man would have had his feelings hurt by this creepy little thing reminding <laughs> someone of them. And she said, I, I made it for you and I wanted you to have it. It reminded me of you. And so I sat there looking at this creepy little thing. She's with a sly grin on her face. She said, you know, if you rub its head, you can make a wish and it'll come true. And then she just laughed and laughed. I keep this on my desk at home. And it not only reminds me of Ms. Vollenweider, her husband, Paul, and their family. It reminds me of all the gracious, wonderful people that God's put in my path over the years. It's a symbol. It's a symbol that, well, it reminds me of a lot of things. And the people, gracious, gracious people that God's put in my path over the years. Sometimes it's words. Sometimes it's symbols. What helps you remember? Is it the words or is it the symbols? Well, for the Apostle Paul, it was both. Because the people there in Corinth, this, this church that he's writing a letter to, they weren't treating the symbol right. And what was the symbol? Well, the symbol was Holy Communion. This Holy Supper, it was a time where they put their little with God's much. Everybody would bring the, the wine that they had and those who had more brought more and those who had a little brought a little and those, they'd bring together the bread. And those who had more would bring more and those who had a little would bring a little. And, and it was a symbol of the body of Christ that the risen Jesus was, was living through all of them together. And that together, that they could do more than any one of them could do alone. And, and it was a symbol to remind them that Jesus had, had given his life on the cross. He'd given his, his flesh and his blood for them on the cross to forgive their sins. And he had risen from the grave to live his life through them. And, and that they were to remember they were the church when they put their little with God's much. But that's not what they were doing. This very symbol that, that Jesus gave so they would remember was the very symbol that they used to divide each other. Those who had a lot said, well, my wine is my wine. I'm not going to give it to somebody else. My bread is my bread. I'm not going to. So they bring leftovers. Just whatever they had left, they'd bring it together. It's good enough for who it's for. And they just. And so those who were hungry, those who were poor, they 
They didn't have enough. And it divided them. It divided. Then, and Paul says, I'd love to praise you on the way you treat this symbol right here. But you forget. You forget what Jesus did on the cross. You forget whose you are and who you are. You are the church. You are the church. And, and so he, he points to this symbol to remind them who they are. But he doesn't just do that. He also uses words. And they were the words that we read this morning. And it's a threefold invitation. And I think he made it threefold so we would remember it. And he said on the night when he was betrayed, he took the bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it. And that's what I want to talk about this morning. That it was on the night when he was betrayed, he took the bread. Well, think about that for a minute. Of all the ways that he could have remembered that night, he could have said, well, you know, it was the last night of Jesus' life when he washed their feet. Or he could have said, you know, he brought them into, when, it was the night when Jesus brought disciples into the upper room. Or the night when Jesus told them how he would die on the cross and raise from, be raised from the, the, the grave. Of all the ways, he could have said it was the last night of the Passover, but he said it was the night he was betrayed. Why? Why? Why remember betrayal when he points to this symbol? That in the word, there's the word on the night he was betrayed. Why? I think he did it so you and I would remember who's at the table. Judas is at the table. Forgiveness is offered to Judas. Judas has already sold him for 30 pieces of silver. He would seal it with a kiss a few hours later. And Jesus tells him that that's exactly what he's going to do. But he offers him the bread and the cup anyway. Forgiveness is offered to Judas. The most dastardly person in all of history is offered forgiveness. It was the night that he was betrayed. And if Jesus can offer forgiveness to Judas, there's hope. There's hope for you and me. That he offers his forgiveness to you and to me, not because of how good we are. This is no small grace. This is not a bunch of fresh-faced disciples that are just good and getting good. This is one who's betrayed his life that Jesus is offering forgiveness to. And if he can forgive Judas, he can forgive you. It was on the night he was betrayed. This morning it may be that you have a burden. It may be that you betrayed your values. Or maybe you betrayed the way you were raised. Or maybe you betrayed a loyalty. Jesus died on the cross and gave you and me this bread and this cup, the bread and the cup of forgiveness for you and for me. And he rose from the grave to live his life through us that we would remember that we belong to him and he's given us power to receive that forgiveness this day if you came with a burden let him forgive you leave it here leave it here this day that it was on the night he was betrayed he took the bread and if he can forgive Judas no he forgives you as well but it doesn't stop there. He says on the night he was betrayed, he took the bread. And it says that, and when he had given thanks. Does that seem peculiar to you? The, the very moment that he, we remember that he was betrayed that night, he, Jesus is giving thanks. Now, it's not because they're sitting around, a, you know, a, a cake and ice cream dinner and they're looking at all, all the things they have to be thankful for. No, it's betrayal sitting in the middle of the room. 
His death and his resurrection are, are the next day. He knows it, he says it, and they give thanks. So often, we think that thanks comes from all the things around us, comes from our joy. No, gratitude does not come from joy. Joy comes from gratitude, that it's in the practice of the giving thanks. 1 Thessalonians 5.18 says, in everything give thanks, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. It's not for everything give thanks. It's in everything, in every circumstances, even the hard ones, even the difficult ones, that the fingerprint of God is there, the face of God is there, that his grace, it's no small grace, that it, it shows itself. And when we practice gratitude, gratitude comes up. When we practice putting our little with God's much, when we practice giving our thanks, that more thanks shows up. Joy is the response. That because as a church we're joined together to, to put our little with God's much, we're able to reach out to 40 support groups every week right here at this church and let them know they matter to God and they matter to us. Because we put our little with God's much in gratitude that we, we give and we give generously that every month we feed 200 families right here through our must neighborhood pantry. 200 families the first Monday of every month line up because in gratitude we reach out and thanks we tutor children in elementary schools, high schools here close by that speak English as a second language. And we're able to do that because we put our little with God's much. Because we put our little with God's much, we started three Sunday school classes just in the last two weeks. Because we put our little with God's much and together we are the body of Christ. We baptized two adults in the last couple of months. Because we put our little with God's much that we're preparing a place called the Commons, the Commons Project, to, to join together, to open up a door out into the community to say, you matter to God and you matter to us. Open a door into the church that says, this is whose we are. We belong to Jesus. And you matter. You matter to God. But it's also, this Commons Project, it also opens a door into the future. It says God's not asleep. Yes, we've all been through a difficult time in this pandemic. Yes, it's been hard on us. But yes, we respond in gratitude and joy for what God's done. And we put our little with God's much. It's the giving. Yes, in words of gratitude. Yes, in symbols of gratitude. And yes, it's in gratitude we point to what Jesus has done on the cross. That we, we are the church, the body of Christ in the world. That it was on the night he was betrayed he took the bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it. He broke it. That he broke it that they didn't hunt Jesus down and find him in a cave and pull him out and, and then go and crucify him. That he went into that garden of Gethsemane knowing that Judas was going to seal his betrayal with a kiss. And behind him were the temple guards. Behind him were the Roman soldiers. And Jesus turns to those temple guards and those Roman soldiers and asks the same question that he asked again and again and again all through scripture whom do you seek whom do you seek and when they responded responded Jesus the Nazarene Jesus said I am he and they fell to the ground the power of his word was enough to make those armed men fall to the ground 
With the power of a word, he could have defeated them. But instead, he gave his life for you and for me. He took his life and he broke it. Because of his amazing love for you and for me, he gave his life. And we belong to him. We're transformed by this love. Where we don't just look at his cup. We don't just look at the, the, the bread. Did we take it in that his life might become a part of our lives? And that together, we're the church. Together, into the world to proclaim Jesus as alive by what we do and what we say, by symbol and by word. First century, the early Christians used to, in worship, burn incense. And it was that, that sweet smell of incense that would remind them is what it would do. It would remind them that the Spirit of God was in and among them and they would breathe in the sweet smell of incense and it, it reminded them that the Spirit of God wasn't just on the outside, that the Spirit of God was, was inside of them. And not only that, after worship, they went into the world, into the community, and they could smell that sweet smell of incense in their clothes. And it would remind them that the, the spirit of the risen Christ, that they were clothed in the spirit of Christ. That you and I, together, that we are Jesus for the world. And we do it by what we say. We do it by who we are. And we point to Him. His body and His blood alive in us. This morning, I know that there are about a thousand people that are watching online, either through a download or through a live cast or through a podcast. And I want to offer you communion this well, as well. There's a drop-down screen and it, it invites you to, if you can't come here, to, that we can bring communion to you. That it's the, the, the body of Christ, who we are together with the Spirit of Christ. And we re remember who we are and whose we are. And that His forgiveness it's enough for you and for me that it was on the night he was betrayed he took the bread. That his body and his blood, it's enough that we might put our gratitude, our thanks, that it was on the night he was betrayed that he gave thanks. And no matter the circumstances, you and I can join together and, and give thanks for the power of the risen Christ in our lives. And know that Jesus' life wasn't taken from him. It was given that he might live his life through you today. And I want to pray with you right now. Join with me in prayer. Jesus, we need this time to receive you. Not just know about you, but to receive you. Your life in our lives. And that this relationship, well, it might start now. And may our lives not be the same as we carry, carry your spirit in and through us. It's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. Thanks again for joining us today. Um, just a reminder, if you'd like to watch the entire worship service, you can do so via live stream at 9 o'clock and 11.15 a.m. You can also view the service on demand a little bit later this afternoon at rumc.com slash sermons. Also, if you have any prayer requests, we would love to hear about those. You can send those in to pray at rumc.com. 
Also, if you'd like to give of your tithes and your offerings, you can do that online as well. And that's at rumc.com slash giving. Uh, thanks again for joining us today and for honoring God with your presence. We hope and pray that you have a wonderful week and we look forward to seeing you again next week. Hi, thank you for joining us. My name's Tom Davis. I'm senior pastor here at Roswell United Methodist Church. Our mission here at RUMC is to help people live a Christ-centered life. We're a welcoming church, we're a biblical church, and we're a compassionate church. That the, we believe that the way that, that God made us, that he made us in his image. And what the Bible tells us is that his image is an us, is an our. When God said in the creation story, let us create humans in our image, he made us to be in community together. He made us to connect to him and one another. That's the place that this is at Roswell United Methodist Church, a place of community and faith. I want to invite you to join us. It might be online, it might be through social media, or it might be here in person. We meet at 9 o'clock in a contemporary service with a band. We also have two 1115 services. One is here in the sanctuary with a traditional choir and organ. We also meet at 1115 with a band in our chapel. Thank you for joining us, and I look forward to meeting you.